for me has been a long time coming. I wanted to represent this video with both the passions of the community but also the reasoning of Smogon and the league assets of what is actually been happening there, whether or not things have been good or not. And it took me a long time to get this one right. And I really want to have that said because I'm releasing this just before the Crown Tundra meta goes off and I know a lot of Pokemon will be allowed in this meta and is whether or not they should have stayed banned or if there are a reason to keep them around with handicaps involved with them. I feel this is a delicate issue and it comes from a place of passion and consider that this generation had a smaller roster than we usually are in. Um, the definition of complex ban got a lot broader and a pretty real question whether or not it should be allowed because we have fewer Pokemon, of course and with that in mind it just also happens that certain Pokemon become all the more viable if the restrictions are made to hamper others and take that in contrast to C-moves and Mega Pokemon no longer being in the game and with a lot of defensive Pokemon that are able to pressure match up they haven't been able to do before at the same time that the Apex Sweepers and Wall Breakers are always at risk of getting banned because they break apart the defensive course and probably few that are that actually is working. So it's a fair question and it's a hard question to really debate whether or not something is right or wrong. And I really want to say this going into this, no matter what my conclusion is, that it is my conclusion and nothing else. And you should always define your vision and ideas with the peoples in the making and the people in making the rules because no matter like I said my conclusion is I believe it is a much harder question and what I really are getting into. Now I was lucky enough to get both Pokegame, Finch and Automatic to be able to cover what their view of this was. Pokegame of course being one of what I would say our community's finest players and the very big inspiration for a lot of us um, he represents a, a broad community and I think what he said has high value because he knows the meta and because he plays it so much that um, his, his opinion should be taken with, you know, like I said, a real value. And they were Finch, which is an extremely grounded person and I've really been enjoying debating every weird things with him because he is of the Smogun OU Council, that also means that he has a lot of experience with different ideas and how whether or not something are or aren't working. And as a result, he has, a, what I would say, a, he is a voice of reasoning when it comes to these types of dialogues because he is not a single-minded person by any chance of imagination, but he is considering a lot of options before making his shot. And that is something that you only get value of with a person such as Finch. And then we have Automatic, which are the hosts of the Draft League LA or NL site. Basically, the site that every, I would say, every good league are using. It is a great site to actually host your own leagues and get statistics and be able to roast um, and draft naturally. Um, Automatic was, of course, a longtime friend of mine in this community, and um, he has, of course, been on the receiving ends of complex bands before, as leagues tend to allow a lot more, and some diversity works and some of it doesn't, and uh, the reason his opinion values a lot here is because he actually has both statistics and real-life experience, I'm gonna say, about these types of changes. So without further ado, um, I all actually didn't force any of them to actually record a recording for me because the time is getting course close and of course we had a crown thunder but they were very happy to actually just provide their opinions in text so we'll provide you that i'm actually going to start off with pokegame it said this i think complex bands are good they allow for unique meta games and people can actually understand them hey blaze skin is broken with speed boost but not with blaze but obviously the con is the people saying but where do we stop the complex ban? I believe the solution is set limit to how many complex ban we can have. In terms of PR, they make sense to have two, putting a better light at Smogon. If we had complex ban, Clefable wouldn't have been a problem pre-DLC. If Amon is straight up broken, obviously we ban it. But if it is just one, if it has one great thing going for it, why not remove it and keep the metagame going? And I think this is something that most people are actually seeing it as, because some of us know that some League Pokemons, such as Blaze, Blaziken for example, or Blaze Cinderace, 
actually in its own right wasn't necessarily broken, have one good thing going for them and that straight up making it impossible to deal with. Um, it's a very good example of this is Cinderace before actually it got Libero. Cinderace had a very good cover niche in OU before that, it actually had a cool change and it was a really good pirate slash revenge killer and it was used often enough to stay OU even with Blaze in mind. Libero however put it over the edge and um, I believe even with Libero the other viable sets kind of died with it as of course Libero's offensive set was vastly superior and the ban itself was legitimate. I mean obviously it was just too much to bear to in contrast what already or heaven so that's that's the con that's the vision of why we should allow bans or a complex ban so let's see how our guy finished view it now finish takes is this complex bans are never really worth it they always leave a thing getting out of hand the logic just isn't there if you have one complex band, it creates a conceptual loophole and a slippery slope. It's not worth entertaining. And we had a, actually a longer dialogue about this on YouTube when it came to Blaziken, which I pretty much said it would probably be the poster boy of whether or not a complex band are in its place or not. And it's actually based on what something Finch was considering way back before it was available with a uh, video with Pokemon, where he said that, you know, Complex bands are not impossible, but there is something to always keep in mind. And like I said, there is just a loophole of how much do we allow and where do we put the limit. And I think that's a very, very real um, definition because, quite frankly, if we're just thinking about abilities, and I guess to an extent that's fine, but then we're gonna debate whether or not the certain ability in other tiers and lower tiers, for example, if let's say. Unnerved Tyranitar, for example, probably isn't even UU worthy. It could fall off to RU. Should you have individual values for different Pokemons? I'm not saying it becomes like that, but it's very easy to kind of get that it will allow one type of ban, but to say we shouldn't allow another type of ban. It's just gonna steamroll, and all of a sudden we have complex bans all over the place. So it's very easy to see how this could transpire. It's the reason we have smoke on tears because we're gonna base our opinions on the base valued Pokemon. So basically once it goes Ubers, even if it isn't viable in Ubers or not, or if it is or isn't really, um, the definition is just based on that, um, like, sorry, uh, the ready packaged Pokemon, for example. The Blaze Blaze is gonna, you're gonna use certain Ubers, no, but you can, but <laughs> speed boost is probably what you're gonna use. But Genesec, for example, is horrible in Ubers in, in regular, probably a different general story about it now, but it might actually be too much for OU, so even if it's a viable in Ubers, she would do restrictions to make it less viable in the lower tiers, and so yeah, that, it's, it becomes out of hand, or a certain move that makes it banned, if so, she would not allow that move, and all of a sudden it can end you, so it's a valid argument, because basically once you open this door, you will never be able to shut it, so there is a reason you have to restrict it for now at least, because it could very easily get out of hand. Now, Otomaya's answer is a lot longer, and it actually is an official tweet he made a few weeks back. So, I want to, of course, link that down below, as I really want to read the majority of his tweet, as there is really valid information. Consider this, he is the host of the League Endel side, which means he already experienced a few of these type of complex bands, and it actually has tailored some of, uh, of the matchups and actually the leagues themselves, so pretty much this is it. Alright, this is probably gonna be a long lol. Uh, I think the biggest thing with going on with this is that an argument not between what's right or wrong, but because what is fun and not. Personally, I don't think Smogon should have complex ban. Firstly, because it makes the format harder than it already is. Uh, when I first came to Smogon, I already had a hard time finding out what stuff worked, like the whole list of tiers was pretty intimidating, and when you first see it, adding more complexity to that wouldn't be good in my own opinion. And besides that, and yes, I know a lot of people doubt this, but I think the slippery slope argument is a very valid one. Just look at the draft league community. First we had no complex ban, then people wanted ability to have complex ban, and people made, yeah, fine was fine with it, but because ability only, 
Then suddenly people wanted Mega Kang without Seismitas, and people wanted certain mounts without C moves, and there was talk about Curing without Dragon Dance this generation, and Volcrona without heavy duty boots. Since we first everyone thought it was gonna be broken, it's a slippery slope that's literally, <laughs> literally already happened. In Draft League community, people will keep push for the limit set. Even with replies in this tweet, I also already seen people argue no fishes rend uh, Dracovish as well. Uh, last but not least, uh, and I have to say this, and it doesn't apply to every mod, but some Pokemon just lose their identity. In my own opinion, um, if you complex ban them, like Vish for example, is nothing because the Vish is Rend, or Galarian Darmanitan is really nothing without the Gorilla Tactics. Uh, it just doesn't apply. This doesn't apply to things like Speed Boost Blaziken or Proteon Greninja because there are other mods that get it as well. It's mainly that I don't see the point of using certain Pokemon if their signature thing isn't allowed on it. Another thing to consider is where does it stop? Just OU or we're gonna go all the way for Monster UUBL and other BL tiers? It really gets that people just want to use certain mods. Like Blaziken is my favorite Pokemon and I get it. But the upside is don't outweigh the downside. Sometimes the world just can't be perfect, and I think this is the case. Smogon would do best not to make this a more complicated issue. And that holds a lot of value. Um, the thing that one has to consider here is that, like I said, Automatic has experienced this. We already have, even in League aspect, we have um, uh, Gigantamax Pokemon without item, and there are game decisive at times and actually our leagues just that have wins and league or <laughs> i shouldn't take anybody's victor away but it's been pretty much defined of whether or not how well you use your dynamax pokemon and nothing else it doesn't matter how good a player you are if you get beaten by something dumb and gigantamax and dynamax are kind of dumb <laughs> and many times they are so there is a value to be had here and i think what automatic is saying is that those complex rules really open up the door that you, you don't really want to see like there has to be a defined limit and um, with all of these informations considered and um, i have a conclusion on my own but like i said the these three of anything hold for me at least the hardest value no matter what i think this i think their opinions matters a lot more than mine because of what they represent in this community conclusion I, I realized that my conclusion could be actually longer than their opinions about it and uh, I'm okay with it but I really want to enforce the idea that like I said no matter what I think keep this as an opinion and nothing else but my conclusion is that complex bands should be allowed but it has to make sense for me there should be no fan or Poketuber such as myself that should be able to influence that decision. For me, we have the people at Smogon who clearly oversight everything and I believe in their capabilities of actually acknowledging this. For me, um, a complex ban should be banned of, or should be defined whether or not a Pokemon should be Uber or, or you or nothing else. Like That's the limit. It is, should be where pushes the Pokemon over a limit to becoming an uber pokemon over OU. For example, um, the legitimate things I think that it should be, be keep in mind is what things should we allow to be able to allow a complex band that it doesn't spiral out of hand and uh, order was kind of on the money on that and it should be defined by abilities only because I think everything else is just too much to reconsider. For example, for me, uh, Moopools are ever-changing and Pokemon's become broken or not depending on what they can learn. For example, Ma Shadow was allowed in Smogon OU because it didn't look to be that tough, but the Moople alone, in contrast to Special Thief, was making it outright broken. Krakovich kind of the same that Vicious Rend is not necessarily in itself a little broken move, but the thing that Drakovich could do because of a good defensive typing allowed it to work flawlessly. I don't believe not allowing Fish's Rend should allow Drakovich. Drakovich is a broken Pokemon on its own merit and it's based on its Moople alone and nothing else, but abilities should be treated differently. If it's a combination of Moople and ability, then we have what I would say a case of re-value age of Pokemon for a complex ban. For example, I think Blaziken represents the best of that. A Blaze, Blaziken, is 
not as intimidating as Speed Boost Blaze again. It is a base 80 Pokemon and in its speed, and that's while while good, it's not necessarily all that scary. Same thing with uh, Cinderace. As Cinderace had a pretty defined OU niche already, as I already stated. But um, due to Libero, it is absolutely breaking boundaries of what that Pokemon could or couldn't be. And uh, it makes sense to ban Libero for that. And for me, it is the combination of Cinderace and Libero that makes it broken. Not Libero, or not Bla or <laughs> Cinderace and Blaze. Another Pokemon that kind of come into that environment is a Pokemon that's going to be suspected naturally. And that's going to be Landorus Incarnate. It is a Pokemon that is... As far as I'm aware, always banned because its power output, thanks to Shea Force and Life Orb, are ridiculous. It is a Pokemon that is absolutely breaking boundaries, and it should be banned because Shea Force making that that much more powerful. But of course, with uh, Sand Force, it is not as intimidating. And considering how many few ground flying we have, we're actually only gonna have the Lando variants here. I very much would appreciate if Lando stick because I think it's in its own right a viable Pokemon even with Sand Force, with Defog and whatnot. But um, with basically, well, banning it because of its power output due to Sheer Force and not Sand Force, um, you guys see where I go with this. Like it is the abilities to break them. It is the the correlation of abilities and uh, Pokemon itself that kind of breaks some boundaries. I do believe, however, there is a big issue with this logic. It is a Pandora's, bo a Pandora's box that I've always considered, and it's something I want to kind of present because I know if we were allowing this type of complex bands, that this is a big issue we're gonna see moving forward. And that is, some Pokemons might get easier to ban because there is a contrast of a returning Pokemon with a bad ability born with them. The thing that Smogon does so well and something I think is important is that they base their opinion on the whole Pokemon, its whole viability. And that could be kinda shaky when the ability is born with only its ability and we differentiate them. Um, for me, for example, the Tapus, which now gonna have the ability or have their hidden ability available, which will mean that they are without terrains, what is stopping us from actually banning all the terrains on the Tapus because it breaks them or it makes them very, very, very threatening? If I feel it's an easier call to make if we know they will come back rather than, for example, actually developing if this set is broken or not. I even think that Rillaboom kind of is the same area as, of course, without Grassy Search or Grassy Terrain. Um, the Grassy Glide combination with Rillaboom really isn't that busted. Uh, I mean, if we only have Overgrowth, it was clear an RU Pokemon is going to fall lower than that. And that's something I feel that's, that's the biggest issue, because basically we could very much quick ban things based on just our gut feeling, which is something we don't have to do now. We have to reevaluate Pokemon's a lot more defined. So, like I said, even though I think it is the best type of solution for complex bans, I do see them as an issue when it comes to banning all types of Pokemon overall because basically we could allow pretty much it or like what is talking over saying well, you know what an Oracle Fable should not be viable it should not be available it should only have magic card restrictive Pokemon such as that is always going to be an issue and that's probably like the toughest thing Smogan gotta take a stand on hence why I want to end on these notes respect Smogon's conclusion of this issue no matter how it turns about I want to present it in a way I think makes sense, but I also want to really enforce that no matter what I think, they have the reasons to keep in it the way it are. And I think I presented probably one of the obvious one of that, that things could backfire quite fast. I definitely believe once they open this door, there is no turning back. And that is something I think Finch, for example, is aware of, that once we do this, it can't be undone. It really, really can't be undone. They have still paying a hard, hard, I was gonna say a tough price for what they did in Generation Five with Rain, um, or the, you know, the, we call it the mandatory Rain contract with Swiss Swim. That kind of changed the next generation, but that's something they're still paying for. It's something people still argue whether or not they should have done that or not. And I can only believe they're facing the same type of dialogues now. So respect Smogon's conclusion and don't. 
force rules upon them that they are trying desperately to do themselves. They are actually in this for the long run and making them the game itself be as balanced as possible. And while we have wishes for a broader roster, we also at the same time need to respect that they do everything they can to make sure that this isn't getting out of hand. And if complex rules are one of those reasons, we gotta respect it, no matter how much most of us want it. There is a reason it still is the way it are. So with that, you guys, I really hope you enjoyed it. So I want to thank Finch, Odo, and Pokegang for actually taking their time of the day and living with me on the HSU. There is a one reason complex ban, but like I said, the day that we allow it is the day we're also gonna face the, the repercussions of that decision. So with that said, that's all you guys. Thank you for watching and have a great day, everyone. Take care.